Welcome to the final episode of season one of My Best 11 podcast. Today we are joined by a midfield striker extraordinaire who I was humming the song about earlier today when I was teaching the students at school and I've just asked him and he can still remember and apparently he still hums it himself. Arsene Wenger's got Thierry and we but we don't care because we got this man on the podcast today, Enoch Shawomni. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? Very good. Marvin, how are you? I'm good, Andrew. Um, I've got Enoch here. He's on the same time zone as me. So between the two of us, um, it's 7 a.m. in the morning and we'll see which one of us falls asleep first. And you'll have to like, give us a shout to wake up. Wake us up. <laughs> we both look very awake and I'm sure we'll warm, warm into this. Um, you'll warm into this, Marv. You'll wake up. You'll, you'll wake up. So um, Enoch has played for a number of clubs. As um, We'll go through and I'm sure we'll talk about a number of these clubs as we go through his best 11. Uh, but they include teams like Luton, Bristol City, Leeds, Falkirk, Tranmere, Notts County, uh, Torquay, Plymouth, Canby Island. And um, despite being born in London... Um, represented Nigeria um, a couple of times, which I'm sure he's very, very proud of, which I'm sure we'll get to as well. Uh, so we are going to jump straight in with Enoch. And as it's the final episode of the season, we're going to let Enoch take it away a little bit and lead and lead from the front. So Enoch, you're in, what are you doing in Florida at the moment? You're doing, so you're doing a bit of management and a bit of coaching, that type of stuff over there from what I understand. Is that right? Yes, I, I set up my, my own company, Global Soccer Pathways. It's kind of a resource for, for soccer players who want to just kind of navigate the industry through education, through elite training. Um, so just giving opportunity for players. Stuff that I was looking for when I was kind of 16 to 18 and never, and never at a pro academy myself. Oh, excellent. Just create an extra pathway. Yes, exactly. Awesome. So you do a bit of coaching, and I know Marv does as well. Marv's very, Marv loves his, his tactics and loves having a chat about tactics. So what's the formation, your best 11 team, or what formation do you like to play in the most? Or they might not be the same answer. Um, I'm going to go for 4 4 one, one. Um, Not necessarily probably the best formation that... Um, but I, towards the end of my career, I kind of played up top of, of by myself. So we usually kind of played in a... Sorry, we've lost you a little bit. Enough. Can you still hear me? Yep, I can now. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so I'm going to go for 4 4 one, one. Um, just because some of the players I played with, um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about their best positions and, and kind of the formations that they played over 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 like the career I've played with them. So going for that, um, the goalkeeper. So this goalkeeper um, played Champions League semi-finals. Last season. Yeah. Last season. Last season, Champions League semi-final. He was on Liverpool's books. Uh, uh, did he play semi-final? Though? Go on then, Andrew, go on. Scott Carson. Not Carson. Oh, See, you with me, Marv, weren't you? Because I, I should. Well, hasn't, <laughs> hasn't he been Man City's reserve? I was. Um, That's what I was thinking. He'd been Man City's reserve for a while. Man City got to the semis last year. So he started in the Champions League semi final. I, I believe it was, I believe it was last season. Started. He was on the Who's books at Liverpool. This? I'm trying to remember his Champions League semi-finals last year. Hungarian international. Hungarian international. I'm totally blank. 
done me. <laughs> so he must have been going for Leipzig then. He wasn't going for Leipzig, you're correct. Do you know what? I played, this is going to frustrate me. I played with him at Premier Rovers. He was on loan from Liverpool. <laughs> wow, what a step up. And I'll say the same if it was Luton. <laughs> <laughs> to play Champions League <laughs> semis for RB Leipzig. Go on, go on, Enoch. You stopped um, us from day one. Why yeah. am I? Uh, Peter Galaxy, goalkeeper for Leipzig. I would never, ever have got that. Would you, I Mark? Didn't get it. <laughs> no, not a chance. <laughs> not a chance. Not a... So, if we've yeah. never heard of him, why? What makes him the best goalkeeper you've ever played with? Then, with the Jami, with the greatest respect. Um, he's in the Champions League like, semi. Sorry, he's in the Champions League semi final, so he, he can't be. He can't be that bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> no, like, like when he was like, when he when he came to Champions, we was we was kind of struggling. Um, we was kind of obviously like fighting fighting relegation at the bottom of the table, and he he done he done great for us. Like top lad, um, humble, um, just worked at his craft. To be fair. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say at that time I'd see him playing in the Champions League semi-final. But fair play to him. He's um, he's he's gone on on over the last like four or five years and just taking his game to another level. Yeah. Do you think he's one of these goalkeepers that once they leave the English system, they they go on again? Because you think of people like um, Chesney, who at Arsenal <laughs> was taken apart by the crowd, but yet he's won what five on a trot at Juventus until this season. And you've got all these goalkeepers that once they leave, they actually do a lot better in the, in the foreign, away from the Premier League anyway. Yeah, maybe because like, um, you've got like guys my size and, and especially like League One football and like and, and, and League Two football, like putting elbows in the keeper's face and all that kind of stuff. So I think uh, it's, just, it's just one of those things. Maybe the, it's, it's less of a battle um, in, in some other leagues. But um, yeah, like you see Chesney, I remember he put out um, a post that like he kept Buffon out the out the team at Juventus, he kept Allison out the team at Roma. So it's like, um, who's not who's really the number one goalkeeper in the world, right? So um, yeah, so she, like, so fair play to Chesney from going out and doing that as well. Yeah, what was um, what was he like? Obviously Hungarian. Um, not many Hungarians I'd have thought in Tramir. Um, what was that like for him settling down and settling in, or was it a case of he was just there to do a job? And obviously Tramir is not too far from Liverpool anyway. Nah, just across the, the river. So, um, no, he uh, he came in, uh, like I said, he's like obviously probably at the start of start of his career um, looking for a chance, but came in, done done exceptionally well. So she, like, in a team fight in relegation. Um, we wasn't the most, um, we, we wasn't, we wasn't a team that kept hold of the ball um, a whole lot. So he, he was, he was a busy goalkeeper, like, just put it that way. He was he was he was in the thick of the action in League One. So um, so yeah, he done great, made some great saves, um, kept us in games. Um, obviously, um, we did concede, but overall, I think um, yeah, he he done great for us um, in terms of just his his output and what what he was able to do for the team. But um, seeing that Liverpool, he's coming from Liverpool, so obviously Liverpool knew he had a, a pedigree. But like, I mean. Full credit to him because again, not being disrespectful to Crimea, and um, it sounds like you said he wanted to get some action and play some games. So for him to come across there shows sort of what sort of character he was. And obviously, being not one of the stronger teams at that time, Crimea, he got a lot of work, which was good for him. Yeah, exactly. I think um, I think anywhere else he went after that, I'm sure he didn't have to work as hard. So. Uh, <laughs> So and, and and he found me quite a bit. So we, we liked to play. We played in that four five one formation, and it was it was going long quite a bit. So Marv remembers me at Luton. I was like I was never a target man at Luton. Towards that end gonna, of my career, we I was in the cold target that. man. I was going to come on to that when when you said about your formation four four one one, and you was probably the, the the pivot in in what how you saw it. But when you first came onto the scene, in which It'll be, actually, we can touch into that now. How, I mean, you were a link to was it an academy or something? Because I remember you coming across with a, a group, a team, um, 
box wheel, let no, not box wheel. I can't think where it was now. The, the no, it, it, was, it, was, it was just a team that was um, full of semi pro players, just yes. like a, a mix. Um, different it. semi pro players from around London, um, basically. Right. And then um, I played centre midfield in that game. Yeah. And uh, and I literally like I literally thought I played terrible in that game. And then like um, I remember, I remember the agent. Yeah, I thought I played horrible. And I remember the agent coming over to me. I was like literally kicking the boards on the side of the pitch. And like um, and the agent that put the whole the whole game together, he was like, uh, they want to speak to you. I was like, this is mistaken identity. I played terrible. <laughs> and then like. Um, but I just remember just playing centre midfield and just being box to box, box to box, box to box. And then obviously they, they asked me to come back in. And I was um, like, well, they've got the wrong person, 100%. No, but you see... what, what You said that what, to them. I didn't say that. I was, I was thinking that. I was thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, um, what you probably didn't realise is that your energy and like you said, just box to box, it was like, just that with like the passing and all that. Listen, that's just like that, that, that's also also something we could always work on. But like your energy, oh my gosh, it was like down and competing. And and so I think I think Steamy, Steamy loved that. It was Steamy who was like, I mean, everyone loved you. And obviously, felt that obviously you, you had something, but like it was, it was your energy. And again, that's credit to you as you are as a, for, as for a person you are. But again, a message for any kids listening out there: you can't beat hard work. That's that's what I tell so many kids now. Everyone, like um, especially in Florida, they they watch the Messi's and, and stuff, and they think, let me just let me just dribble past five players and, and try putting a top corner, and they think that's what all coaches and scouts are looking for. I'm like, just if you just don't, if you work hard and you have the intensity going backwards as you do going forwards, then like coaches will see that. Coaches can understand that. And then the other side of the game. Like a good coach will be able to develop that, and um, but yeah, coming into Luton and it's like being converted into a strike and then learning and then obviously looking at players like Steve Howard and obviously my new love Steve Howard. Um, so I was like, I'm, I'm just gonna look at this guy and see what he does, so I can get in a team and so I can just add elements to my game. And then it just became like, um, like I said, further down my career, the older I got, the more I just became that target man, and it was like kind of less of running in the channels and and playing off the left or the right, like I did with Luton Town. Fantastic. So we move on to right back or left back, whichever one you prefer, Enoch. Um, I'll go left back. He's, um, he's played for England. He's been in the England squad a couple of times. Playing Premier League football right now. He's, uh, he's, a, he's another Scouser. He's a fully-fledged Scouser. Oh. oh. I'm going to just have a guess. I don't know. Um, left back. He could have played left back. I'm just going to say um, Cody. No? No. Oh, you mean Connor Cody? Yeah, I mean... Okay. Maybe it was at Tramley as a kid. I'm thinking he he was at Liverpool. They might have gone there on loan. Which club was he at, Enoch? Huh? Which, Which club? club was he at? With you? At, at Tramley as well. Another one from Tramley. Another one from Tramley. I'll give you. I'll give you one more clue. He's he's at West Ham. He's at West Ham. Hmm. Who's the scout at West Ham? At West Ham? There is a scouser at West Ham. <laughs> and the Cockneys don't mind that. <laughs> Why am I struggling? Why am I, I struggling with this? I'm trying to go through their back line. Dawson. And, he, and, he's, and he's been in the England squad lately. Been in the England squad a couple of, not probably not lately, oh. but a couple of times. Um, what's his? Do you know what? I don't know if he's thinking Cresswell. That's it, Aaron Cresswell. Yeah, yeah. Is he, I didn't know he Cresswell. was a scouser. He's a scouser, yeah, like fully fledged scouser. Didn't he? What Cresswell. I swear, I've, have I got him in my head from Ipswich? 
he may have he may have signed from Tremor to Ipswich. He may have. I can't yeah, remember. I don't know. I always send down as an East that. Anglia boy or something. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, no, Aaron Cresswell. You got it. Yeah. You got it. Aaron Cresswell. Yeah. Um, Cresswell. Was it? That's quite an interesting. Yeah, it's quite an interesting mm. call. I haven't heard what? his name so far on his pod. What was it about him, New York? Um, great left foot. Great left foot. Great delivery. Um, the free kicks, he'll, he'll put some in the top corner from 35 yards. Um, delivery from out wide. Just will whip an absolute ball. Pinpoint. Scored a lot of goals from his deliveries. Gaffer at Tramia loved the he loved the corner routine. So we had about we had about seven or eight in, in our locker just from corners. But he was he was putting unbelievable deliveries in, and that was a big part of our game. It was like kind of we almost we almost had like a little um, a little rugby formation. It's like get it out for the throw ins, get it, win three kicks in the final third, get it, get it in the box. So let's get the twenty twenty, and <laughs> get the ball in the box. So let's um, let's put pressure on the teams that way. So, but his delivery and his his left foot was was uh, superb. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, how many how many games did he play roughly for Crimea? Um, I mean, so. We were there. We were there together for two seasons. So after I left to go to Knox, I think that's when right. he moved on. Um, I think yeah, he moved on maybe the season after I left, or maybe this that season, I, I believe. So I think he did. He did move before he. Uh, he had a move before he went to. Um, before right. he went to. Sure. I don't know why. Yeah. I, I, I'm well and happy to be wrong, but I've got in my head Ipswich. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. No, I right. think I think you could. I think you could be right. Oh, probably. probably not. Thank you for the compliment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we move on to right back then. Let's see how we go with right back. <laughs> right back. Um, actually, yeah, another scouser, actually. What? Another scouser, but I didn't play with him at Tranmere. Okay. Um, played, played with him at Bristol City. Um, great little left back. I think he, 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 he left also... Back or right back? Left back or right back? Yeah. Right back. Okay. You should okay, be great right, left back. back. Yep. Right. This is right back. He he played in the Prem, I think, with Blackburn. Um, maybe QPR as well. I think in the Prem, maybe Championship with QPR. Um, up up and down that field, um, energy. Who's in who's in the promotion season when I was at Bristol City the year after I left? The year after I left um, Luton, uh, went to Bristol, played with him a couple seasons. Um, the second season, he again in the championship, he'd done exceptional. Uh, he was um, in that in that playoff final that season as well. We lost a hole, and he was like a he was a he was an instrumental in, instrumental part of that team for the two years I was at Bristol City. Right back, Andrew. I'm I'm, I'm struggling. Um. The Blackburn thing slightly throw me. The only Blackburn right back I can remember. Ooh. I don't know Ooh. why I've got this. He wasn't there when they won the championship, was he? No. You're looking at he's probably there in the probably early after 2010. Yeah, after oh, after 2010. Okay. Probably, yeah. Because I played Bristol City 2006 to 2008. He was still there, I think, the year I left. And then he, he went on again. As, uh, I think it was QPR first. And then he went to Blackburn. Kevin Gallant's killing us right now. I believe it's in the Prem. Is it QPR or Blackburn in the Prem? Or one of the teams? Um, no, go on. Um, go on. Uh, Bradley Orr. Bradley Orr. Okay. Bradley Orr. Yeah, he was at he was at QPR. He's at QPR. Bradley is he a scouser? I didn't know he he's was a scouser. scouser. Sorry. But honestly, you're, scout, you're throwing, throwing us with these. It. Yeah, definitely. They don't, maybe they're not in the press enough. So you got Bradley yeah. or Aaron Questwell. Do you like your fullbacks to bomb, or do you like them to hold? Um, as in just the way the game is, and obviously as a as a striker, if there's like creativity from the size from fullbacks as well. I think um, yeah, like if they if they can bomb and I don't have to run in the channels, all good for me. I thought okay. I thought I thought Bowles might have been in with a chance. I'm thinking he's got, 
Kev, I thought he's going to be. There's a few, like, um, there's a few right backs over the time. Like, Foles was obviously great. And we, we met, obviously, you know, we met recently. Yeah. Like, just he's out, out here in Tampa, isn't it? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's like, yeah, Foles as well. Um, I know when I first when I first got into the Luton team, I know like Boise was like more of a yeah. right back as well when I first came over. Um, so yeah, there's like I think even that Luton team in general, that Luton team was a was a very very good team. Yeah. Like like had a very good team. Um, yeah, you just look at across the field, like we had players all over. Yeah. No, definitely, um, definitely. Oh. No, go on, Marv. Marv, I was going to move no, on to centre backs. No, I was, I, yeah. Centre-back's going to be Come easy. Centre-back's going to be easy for you. Scouser. No. <laughs> Scouser, from from Aust- Scouser from Australia. Uh, <laughs> Centre-back... Um, right, it's, it's, this is an easy one, but he's, um, he's, he's, been, he's been in the England squad. Um, what else can... What, what else, what, um, Clue that can I give that doesn't really give it away too easy? Uh, it's too e- this is too easy. He's played for five oh. Midland clubs. Curtis Davis. Curtis Davis. Yeah. Curtis Davis. <laughs> yeah, Curtis Davis. Uh, I've got to give it to him. He was he was he was a mate when I was when I was at Luton. Um, one of the young one of the young guns coming through. Um, done exceptional that season. We won the league. Um, we we roomed together. Um, all that kind of stuff. So it was, uh, yeah. So it was, yeah. He was like, a, a great part of that team that um, that got that ninety eight points. And like, a, yeah, to sport his ability, his, he was quick. Um, sometimes he was like kind of out of out of position a little bit, but he used to his pace used to just get him get him there. His long legs and his, his stretch with his, with his slide tackles. And then his career went on. Then great in the Prem, scored FA Cup final. So yeah. yeah, like kudos, kudos to Curtis for for having the career he's had. And now. I don't stop seeing him on TV talking about games no. now. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, good, kudos. Good good good. Yeah, mm-hmm. five Midland clubs. I didn't know that. I knew he was... Uh, um, I think it, it's four or five, yeah. So yeah, I you're right. Like, yeah, I think if you, if you bundle Hull in there as well, in that kind of bracket of being in the centre of England, yeah, I think you're right. Um, I was actually watching... My son was asking me earlier who I'm interviewing tonight, and I showed him a video of the Bristol City at home game where Luton lost 3-1. And it's funny mm-hmm. you said about Curtis can get himself out of out of problems, but um, there was it was a situation where um, Curtis got skinned a couple of times, fell over and still managed to get up and, and half clear the ball. So you're right in what you're saying, that he can actually get himself out of difficult situations. And do you think that's pace? Do you think that's... Obviously, he was very young. He's what nineteen to twenty when he was in Luton team around them. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's just something he had, or what? What do you think you put that down to? It was just like kind of defensive instincts, and like um, I think you know, like some players they they just have that knack to be, even though they may be out of position, but they still they still can just get there and and, and win that ball. And it's like it's just his determination and his his will to 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 defend. I think some players that some players just just great at defending, and I think Curtis Curtis had that in in him. And obviously, with it, pace as a centre back was was is a is a huge asset. Um, I, I came across a lot of centre backs that that were not quick at all, and it's like I'm in in the beginning of the game. It's like I'm just thinking I'm gonna run you, I'm gonna run you today. Like I'm I'm, I'm just gonna get in those channels and run you, and we're gonna see like how quick you are and let them drop off. But with a, with a centre back that has pace, you've got the extra little little bit of confidence that you know you can catch up to that to that forward player. Enoch, yeah. in comparison to you, most centre backs are going to be slow anyway. Trust me. <laughs> it's funny because like uh, just being like obviously used as a target man as like uh, towards the end of my career, like I was like to manage just like I remember Sean Derry took me off one game um, when I was at Knotts and he was like um, we had we were down to 10 men and he was like um I wanted pace up front and I was like have you never seen me play football? It's like I'm one of the quickest in our in our squad, uh, like uh, so. Yeah, so sometimes you get as a six foot five like player striker, you get stigmatized. And towards the end of my career, I was stigmatized that target man. But pace was always like my attribute. It was like pace and power, just kind of like running, running behind, running, running in the channels and stuff. Um, especially early in my career. 
going back to what you um, we said earlier on about you coming into the game with, um, a little bit late, was it was it something which you've always wanted to do from a kid, like to be a professional football player? Yeah, always. Um, it's just it's just one of the things that every at every single age I was I was getting rejected. Um, so even the like trials, um, the trials at other clubs, not, not even not even just pro clubs. Like, like at 14, 15, I was I was getting rejected by West London um, tryouts in in the London tryouts. I, I couldn't make those squads. And like um, I had I had friends that was at they was at Fulham's, they was at QPRs, they was at Watford's, and like um, I was trying to get in, trying to get in, and then it's just like never happened and my parents are Nigerian so it's like my like education first I don't know if you remember I came I don't know I don't know if he was there I think you were with John like when I was 18 I came to Luton when Ricky Hill was manager I was there for I was there yes. for a couple of weeks yeah. when I was yeah, 18 I years do. old and um yeah and, and at that point I went to I went to John um I was like John like uh, I, I already applied for university I can't do both. What's the situation here? And he's like, check your timetable. So I left and went to university. So it was always kind of like back in my mind, this is what I want to do. But I was just looking for the, the right opportunity. And um, because I didn't feel like Luton wanted me strongly there, I said, okay, let me just go to university and like look at it coming back at a, a, at a later age. And fortunately, like at 21, I was able to do that. But like I was at, I was on forty pound a week for about eight months, <laughs> like at the beginning of that time at Luton because there was an administration and they couldn't sign me. So um, for me, it's like I grafted to get there. And I remember at the beginning, at some point, I was like, I don't know if you remember my debut at Plymouth, Plymouth away when I got dragged after forty minutes. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. So I, I remember like playing that first game and and, and newly put me up top, um, and I was like. The game was just so quick for me. And I was like a little bit late in my challenges. Like um, I remember David Bayless at halftime going, yeah, just keep smashing them, keep smashing them. Like you're doing good. <laughs> and I was like, but I want to play football. I don't want to smash people. I'm just coming, I'm just like tackling a little bit too late. And then the referee said like, um, he gave me a yellow card and he's like one more and I'm going to get sent off. And then newly like um, dragged me up 40 minutes. And I was thinking my career, at that point, I think I was thinking my career was over. I was like, the game's too quick for me, not good enough, all that kind of stuff. But I just kind of stuck at it um, at the time. And then it got to a point where it just got easier and easier. And then by February, obviously that month in February, where I like, um, scored my first league goal after missing that chance from two yards out. Don't know if you recall that at Colchester. I think I missed the chance from like two yards out. I wanted to smash it in the net. And I like, kind of absolutely shanked it off the top of the foot, like on a volley, and like spun backwards. <laughs> oh, no, I don't remember that either. But I don't... And then, right. um, and then, I can't, I can't, I can't live that one down. And then, um, and then, scored the winner in that game. And a couple of games later, scored a hat trick against Brentford. And then, then obviously my That's career it. just took off. From yeah. No, I think no, the, I thing, the thing, thing, thing with um, Newly was that um, knowing him, how I know him, it wouldn't have been a case where he would have taken you off, and it was like that's it. Because once he uh, like agreed to. To take you on, he 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 sees beyond that. He, he saw your probably your potential of what you was going to become. So he was just protecting you. So no, that's a great story. No, I don't. I know, like um, from that side of things. Now, obviously, going in that moment, I was just thinking, like yeah. this is this game is not for me. But um, obviously, he just kept coming up, kept turning up, kept just trying to improve, and then newly gave me the time. So i got to respect, respect the, respect the gaffer there because he gave me the time to develop over those, over those eight months, so. It's like, it's like, did you hear that, Andrew? He's back when he started the conversation, he was on 40 pounds a 40 week. 40 pounds a week, right? yeah. 40 pounds. That is probably costing you more at yeah, your own pocket. I was, I, I, was, I, was, I was jumping on train from, from London to Luton. I didn't even have a car. So I was like literally jumping on train and then I was walking to the, I was walking to the ground from the station. Um, it was funny because, like, even even after I scored my hat trick, I actually walked back to the station with my mates. So we actually walked back after that. I had the man in the match trophy and a, and a bottle of champagne, my boot bag, and then I, I was walking back to the station after that game, after the hat trick. And then um, a couple of fans saw me on the streets in Luton, and they're like, "Come to the pub, have a drink with us, have a drink." So me and my wife we went to the pub with a couple of fans after that game. Oh wow! <laughs> we went home. You don't get that anymore. That's what you want no, to hear. No. <laughs> that's what you want to hear, though. But that, that's 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 the true 
community club that's the true kind of link and connection between players and fans that is hard to get anymore and i understand why to a certain extent yeah so, i think so and things like um it's, it's one of those things at the time when i was when i was there it's like everything was kind of surreal for me anyway it's like yeah why do you want to speak to me i don't understand like i haven't done anything yet but um yeah luton fans took me in um they took me under their wing i think they created this thing called enox army as well just taking the mick at the beginning <laughs> And then it just kind of it kind of exploded, and um, but it just gave me confidence. It just gave me confidence mm -hmm. to keep working, keep keep improving. And then when you hear your name in in the in the crowd, it just gives you that extra that extra boost at that time, especially. So, uh, from yeah, the Luton fans they they did a great job in in helping me go to that next level as well. That's great to hear. Great to hear. Um, so, other centre back next to Curtis. Um, could be the there, there could be a few. Um, Talking about like like Boise, a couple a couple of Boise there as well. Um one player like I, I just really liked um got on with him when I was at Bristol. He was I think he was at Bristol for like 20 years. Centre back at Bristol City for 20 years. Terry? Um, yes, yeah, he's got it. Yeah. Yeah, this scary. Yeah. I think um yeah, he was just like legend, great, great captain. Great guy to um, to just learn off in terms of just like the game, his attitude to the game, looking after himself. Um, enjoyed enjoyed playing with him when when I was at Bristol City as well. So I think yeah, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Lewis Carey there. I mean, I, I mean, I remember him. I played against him, and he's a very um, cultured like centre back. Like you said, I mean, not in my in my opinion, didn't panic on the ball, was comfortable mm -hmm. on the ball, competed challenge you with the like tackles and was just an all round decent guy and I got to know him um through Forpy because when Forpy was 24 was there for a little while I got to mm -hmm. um to visit Forpy up in Bristol and got to know him and um, he's a decent bloke. Yeah he's a he's a he's a top lad and like um yeah I just remember the two seasons there he was like um a, a big part of our success. I think he left Bristol for like 20 games. Like for one seat or half a season, he's just like, I want to come back. He left, I think he went really? to Coventry for like, so he, he had like probably like 700 games for Bristol, but 20 yeah. games for Coventry. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, but he was, he was, yeah, he's a club legend. Um, enjoy playing with him. And uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll give that spot to, to him. Fantastic. Great. So, what we can do is we're going to pause it there and then we come back um, from a short break from our sponsors. We will hear the rest of Enoch Schwamney's My Best 11. Hi, I'm Kelvin Davis. This is Sean Deitch. This is Ricky Hill. My name is Kevin Nichols. My name is Mark Pembridge. Hi, my name's Rebecca Lowe. Kevin Gallen. Hi, my name is Mick Harford. My name's Steve Davis. This is Ian Foyer and Kevin Foley. My name's Graham Alexander. And you're listening to... And you're listening to My Best 11. My... My Best 11. My Best 11 podcast. Great. So we are back for part two of my best 11 podcast with Enoch Shawomni. So far, we've got uh, Peter Glasky, Bradley Orr, Aaron Cresswell, Curtis Davis and Lewis Carey. Surrounded by Scousers so far. So we're intrigued to go how Enoch's going to go from here. How are you going to set up your midfield, Enoch? Did you, obviously you saw yourself, we've heard earlier, a box-to-box -box midfielder. Is that the type of midfielders you like? Do you like a box-to-box -box and then a creative or how did you always like it? Um, no, I think like um, for me, it was just like it was just it was just my game. It was like um, I just I just like to be I like always like to be involved in the game when I was younger. Um, I started off centre back because I was one of the biggest, but I used to do like crazy tricks in my own in my own box. And I think one of the teachers in my school team was like, "You're going to give me a heart attack, so I'm just going to move you to midfield." So I think from like 13, 14 years old, I started just playing midfield, and I just like to be involved in the game and. And I, I just like used to like you know just run around like um, just get on the ball, be involved, uh, tackles, um, uh, and, and be creative as well, and, and try to score goals. So I think that was just my game and just how I enjoyed playing. But I think for for midfield, I think you need a bit. You need you need both elements, of course. Um, you need that being able to obviously go back, um, win the ball. Um, though I think even now you look at those luxury players now is like. Look at like the Liverpools and and even like the Man Cities. It's like you don't really see many luxury players. You see all the players, midfielders. They're they're, they're doing both. They're doing both sides of the of the work. The winning the winning the ball back, closing down early, 
trying to get the ball as quick as possible and then they have the ability to do something with it as well. So I think that's kind of what I've kind of brought into, into my team. Um, so, so I think, uh, yeah. It's, uh, so we'll, we'll go to this, we'll go start off with the central midfielders. So see how we go guessing these, Marv. And, for, okay, and so listeners is, at home. <laughs> the fir- first guy um, is actually a Premier League winner. Won the Premier League. Won the Premier League. Been in the England squad a um, few years back. Danny Drinkwater. <laughs> no, not Danny Drinkwater. What was wrong with that guess? He's been in the England squad and won the title with Leicester. <laughs> it wasn't that stupid a guess, was it? <laughs> <laughs> you should laugh at me. I didn't get to the Prem. I think he's played. I think he's played mostly in the Prem, right? It's most of his career in the Prem. I didn't. I didn't get to play with Drinking Water though. I didn't know um, if he started off somewhere like Bristol or Leeds or something. <laughs> I'm know. not. That, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Keegan, right. Team. So he's won the Mercury. Premier League. Won the Premier League. Um, been in the England squad. A few times, a few caps for England. What club was um, he with when you played with him? What Leeds club? United. Oh. Leeds United. He's a centre midfielder, but he has played left back. For the team that won the Premier League. There we go. I've got it finally. I think. Go on, man. James Milner. No. Oh, what? He played at Leeds and he played left back for ages with for Liverpool. But, but like, I, didn't I, mean, him he, I didn't play with him when he was at Leeds. Yeah, and, oh. and I don't think Enoch was born when he's probably played for him at Leeds. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. I don't know how nah. funny thing is I saw I saw a match program. Funny thing you mentioned, yeah. James Milner. I saw a match program where we played Swindon, Luton Town v Swindon away. James Milner at the front as a, as a 16 year old boy. See? Found a match program when he was at Swindon <clears throat> on loan. But yeah, it's not at, James six, Milner. at 16, Marv, see? So it wasn't James okay. Milner anyway. I don't know what we're talking about James Milner for. He won the Premier League. I reckon that's the curveball that's, that's really. Go on, get what, what club was he with at the, in the Premier League? That's the last clue. What club was he? Man City. Also played see. for Villa. Do you know what? No, it can't be him. He never played for Leeds. So did James Milner play. play for Villa as well, smarty pants, both of you. <laughs> 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 I can't no, believe this. Gareth Barry never played for Leeds. It can't be Gareth no. Barry. He's done He's us. Again. He's done us. No, I'm not giving up on this one. I don't care if I'm sitting all night. I'm not giving up on this one. He signed... He went to Villa from Leeds. He went from Leeds to Villa. From Villa to Man City. You got it? No. Every single clue you give fits in with Gareth Barry or James Milner. So I'm fed up with this game. <laughs> <laughs> I think he played People a whole home season sh- left. He played a whole season left back for Man City. Oh. He's at Everton now. Uh, Fabian Delph. That's the one. <laughs> that is the one. Fabian Delft. I, I never had Fabian Delft down at Leeds. Was he? Did he yeah. start there? Is he when he was younger? Yeah. I never oh, had him. I always he, thought he was at Watford. I don't know why I had him down for Watford, but okay. Oh, just, just your mouth out, jeez, Ben. <laughs> right, well, unbelievable. Here we go. I'm going to edit that down me. massively. I'm going to yeah. edit that whole thing down so we don't look so <laughs> crap, <Yeah>. Marv. <laughs> 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 no, he, um, unbelievable. Like 18 years old at, at Leeds in League One, took the team from the like 
struck with his neck. Like just he he kind of like was the driving force at 18 in that in that Leeds team when I first was there. Scored some unbelievable goals from midfield. So much ability. Um, could could do both sides. Could tackle. He was like a scrawny little 18 year old. I think he's still a little bit scrawny as well now, but. He, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, scoring the eighteen-year-old. But he would like he would tackle, he would fight, he would win the ball, have quality. He would he would spray forty-yard passes, through balls. Like he would go past a couple of players and put the ball in the top corner. And it was like, um, yeah, just like, as a talent, he was just he was unbelievable. Yeah. So when you were at Leeds, did they see you still as a striker, or did they try and bring you back, or did you ask to come back a little bit into midfield and play next to people like? No, Fabian? Leeds, 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 I was, Leeds, I played. I think from that point on, I was kind of like a um, striker from there, from when I was at Leeds. Um, Bristol, I played left mid, right mid, left, um, left side of a three, right side of a three. Played a lot of different positions at Bristol, but from Leeds, I think I stopped moving around. And the, the Leeds United um, transfer, how did that come about? Because, I mean... Arguably, Leeds, like, I mean, still to this day, but even, I mean, from when I was growing up as a kid, a kid a, one of the biggest clubs um, in, the, in the English history sort of thing. So how was that? How did that move come about? And, and, and tell us a little bit about it. Um, so, so the season Bristol got to the championship final, I played a game Crystal Palace away. And then on, on a Wednesday... I started the game, not in the stands or on the bench. I actually started mm. the game. On a Wednesday, I get a call from the club saying, you're not part of the plans anymore. You should go. And then Dennis Wise is the Leeds manager at the time. And he's calling me. And like, um, and Leeds are in League One, Bristol's in the championship. And this was like my second go at the championship, right? So I was like, I want to stay in the championship. Um, I just want to like see what, see what I can do in the championship. So I say to Bristol, when I say to Dennis Wise, that um, I don't want to, I'm not leaving. I want to stay and fight for my place. The gaffer at, at Bristol goes, you're mad. <laughs> and, and like, um, and so um, I said, well, I'm not going to go League One at this moment, point in my career. I had six months left on my contract. So I said, I'm, if I go, I'm going to go on loan to a championship club. Because I knew there was a couple interested in me. So I ended up going Sheffield Wednesday. Dennis Wise, two days after he calls me, leaves to become technical director at Newcastle. So all the, all the players at Bristol was like, um, actually, you made the right decision. But now there's a new manager who may not have liked you. The second game when I went to Sheffield Wednesday on loan was against Bristol City, so I couldn't play. So the, so the gaffer at Sheffield Wednesday says, you can take the week off or you can like just come in um, and play a resi game. So I played a resi game and it's against Leeds. And they got the new management in. Gary McAllister is now the new manager. I actually played a resi game for Sheffield Wednesday against Leeds, scored two goals in that game. And I get word from Leeds in that summer that goes like, um, if, he's at, if he's on loan at a club and no one cares about him and he plays like that in a resi game, imagine someone cares about him. And that's why I signed for Leeds that summer. That's fantastic. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's awesome. And to, and to play under such a great player as Gary McAllister, I mean, um, mm -hmm. done everything. Won a Champions League, won everything at Leeds, Premier League, etc. So, um, fantastic person. What was he like as a manager? Was he... Was he quiet? Was he forthright? What was he like? So I know he didn't really have too much success there either, did he? No, no, he was no, he, he was good. He was like, it's funny because even in training, like there'd be some things like he he want the team to do because he wanted us to play football. And um, I don't think like probably sent our centre halves probably didn't at the time. Probably um, in League One as well. It's like it's pressure, right? So it's like um, at some point, so it's like you just have to clear the ball. And I think he just wanted to like pass out there from the back and and obviously do that how how he grew up playing in obviously with Leeds and with Liverpool and stuff like that. But we, I just don't think we had the quality throughout the whole team to to do that. So sometimes we'll lose the ball in our own third and concede goals. And I think that's the reason. Just obviously results wise, a couple of games we were like um, we we'll, we'll lose we we'll lose a game that we shouldn't really lost. We would have like seventy percent possession, but we'll lose the game two one. Um, but yeah, he was he was great to learn from, and I remember in training a couple of times he'd be like, "Why can't you just do this?" And he would just take the ball and spray it. <laughs> like he'd be like, "We're like we're like Gary, we're like Gaffer, like it's like okay, you played you played that you played you played the top level your whole life. Like we're, we're just learning, we're trying to learn, you know." <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, like, I, training. and I can well imagine 
losing the ball in the in your own third by muck, by what fans is mucking about with it, it's mm-hmm. going to pretty quickly get you sacked because it's not going to yeah. endear yourself to the home fans, especially because you're quite often at your right. They're the ones behind the goal tend to be the the hardest, the toughest fans of them all. Yeah, exactly. And it's, I just think um, in yeah, League One, it's like it's like you just want to get out of that league and then obviously test yourself in a championship. But you, you want to just get out of that league by any means necessary almost. Uh, but obviously he had a philosophy, way of way he wanted to play. Um, but um, just maybe at that time, he just didn't have the, the players to do everything that he wanted to do. And especially yeah. like obviously the pressure of like um, just... Like League One, League One championships are tough league, but League One's also a tough league, especially if you if you want to just play football the whole time. You just got to mix it up a little bit. And I think that's what we left under him, just mixing it up. Um, but yeah, but it was it was great to, it was great to learn from him. Um, unfortunately, in that December, um, I think um, he was only there for like he signed in the summer. And he was he was gone by by before Christmas. So um, so yeah, I think. Um, um, that that was the that was the difference between um, obviously just going up and then Simon Grayson comes in and then he he does he does his thing for that for that six months but I'm out injured then as well so he's kind of building his squad when he comes in as a manager and I'm out for seven months with an injury so it's just one of those things that leads. Yeah, but again, picking you up now, Enoch. Um, you 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 took an opportunity where like some players in today, <clears throat> excuse me where you've gone on loan somewhere and you wasn't going to be able to play, but the man is asked you to play a reserve team game. And you've said yes. And that, that move basically has come about because obviously they've seen you in that reserve game. So there'll be some players who will be like, nah, I mean, I'm too good for that. I mean, I'm, I'm on loan. Why would I go and play with reserves? And it just shows, like, you just don't know. I always say this, that you never know who's watching. You never know who's watching. Mm-hmm. And then he gives it to second time. I always tell players, I always say, like, I, for me, I took being a pro player as I'm self-employed. So it's like, whatever I do is is going to be my rewards, right? So whatever I put in is what I'm going to get out. But I'm self-employed. I maybe get paid by a club, but at the end of the day is what I'm doing. So for me to go to um, to Sheffield Wednesday, I just wanted to keep ticking over, get my game rhythm right in the res- reserve game and not have a week, almost like 10 days off between between games. So, um, so that for me was just like, okay, I'm just going to keep ticking over, keep my fitness up. So when I go back into the, into the first team for the for the third game, I'm there, I'm still I'm still ready, you know. And I think that's that was just always my mentality throughout my whole career. And I think it's just because of the start I had, the start obviously I had with with Luton and just like grafting eight, eight months, like trying to earn that contract, and then like I I just never took it for granted that yeah. um, this career is 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 here forever kind of thing. No. Definitely, definitely. So next to Fabian. Next to Fabian, um, I'm going to kind of go left field with this one. Um, he, he kind of had his whole career in the lower leagues, like not like kind of national prem, kind of League Two, League One. Um, I played with him at Notts County. Unbelievable footballer, like unbelievable footballer. International, played for Trinidad and Tobago. Carlos Edwards. No. It's the only Trinidad and Tobago player on that. I know. Out. This is, um, yeah, I just I just love playing with this guy. Um, like, even in training, like, unbelievable footballer. He should have gone higher. I think he started at QPR as a kid. Marvel, Marvel probably know him if I say the name because we played a lot of reserve games against him and he was mouthy. He was a mouthy kid. When you just played like that. I think he's at Reading. I think he's at Reading. Uh, maybe Peterborough in his in his youth as well. Um, played quite a few resi games against him when when I was at Luton. Mouthy kid, like used to talk a lot. Like even even coming in the change room at Notts County later on. Um, he actually played for Luton. Actually, he played for Luton when he was in. Um, he played for Luton hundred percent under. Uh, I can't remember who was under, but when there was in the conference. Oh. Played played for Luton Town. Under um, what's his name? The Dicky Dosh. No, the other one. Rabbit. No, the. <laughs> I'm gonna say it, no, the, the, it's quite nice. The nice. You're not saying Rabbit's not nice, but like um. John Still. 
John Steele. Was it under John Steele? I think so. Um, when when it was in the conference, and then he, he I think he left Luton to come to Notts County, and then he obviously got his move under Keith Kerr when we was at Notts County together, and then he then he left Notts County. And he played like over hundred games for Dagenham and Redbridge. Yeah. Ryan uh, Shows? No. 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 Um, Andre Bucard. Oh, there's a there's a name I haven't heard for ages. <laughs> Boots. Yeah. Boots. Oh my god. Boots. Boots. Um, and talent wise, yeah, like one one of the best players I've like I've seen play. Um, other side of the things that he just I don't know just couldn't go to. to I think he's he, his game is more suited to playing at a higher level than it is playing yeah. in League One or League Two. I remember, like, um, he used to like to put his foot on the ball. I remember Sean Davis, like, going crazy on the sidelines. Like, stop putting your foot on the ball. <laughs> it was just his game. He just, he, he liked to play. But he had unbelievable, like, ability. Um, but he, he can keep the ball. He can he can spray a pass. Um, little one-twos um, with your midfielders and your strikers. He was just, like, he was, he was great to play with um, in terms of just that level. I remember when under Sean Derry at Notts County, Sean Derry was, like, Obviously, we were fighting relegation as well. So, but he was like, just turn him. It's like, so yeah, like, um, the tactics was like, full backs get it, put it in the corners. Centre backs get it, put it in the corners. There was no arrows for the midfielders. It was like, the midfielders just like kind of doing doggies back and forth. And that's just not his game. It's just, it's just not his game. You need to no. get him on the ball um, and, and play. And I think, um, yeah, he's just, um, like, as a talent, he's, he, he had like, um, he's a superb player. Do you know? Do you know what? I mean, I just did it, it just threw me. I, I mean, I should have got. I should have got it because I worked with um, Boots when um, I helped um, Lee Harper. He was at Kettering, and Boots was mm -hmm. at Kettering when I went to get him. Oh, and yeah. him. He was so like he was always like a calm and like talented player, and just saying, just chill, just chill, just just give it to me, just give it to me. Just give it to me. <laughs> and like he was, he was a, like a good character, a funny lad. What's he up to now, then? Do um, you know? I don't know. I've, um, I think he's he's left Dagenham. I don't think he's. I don't know if he's playing. Maybe he's maybe he's gone down the knees to keep playing football. But I don't. I don't he's know. Still he's still playing. Right now. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Um, I saw that maybe 2020. I kind of the last club I I I, re I remember him playing at. So, but no, very but yeah. yeah you're right, left very field, but I got I, I got to give a shout out to like um with Nigeria. I played with Olaf and Jana. Uh, um, he was at Wolves, um, like pfft, unbelievable as well. Um, so yeah, there's like Scott Arfield played with him at Falkirk, mm -hmm. done great, won the league at Rangers this year as well. Unbelievable, yeah. great players. Yeah. So like, yeah, there's a few, a few decent, like decent midfielders. Even like Nichols at Luton, um, crazy, ca <laughs> crazy character, <laughs> but um, he was a driving force in that team. Absolute driving yeah. force in that Newton team. Um, great ability as well. Just absolutely nuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. So you got Fabian and uh, Bouchard. Who is going on the left wing? On the left wing, um, I'm going to do... Um, so my wing, my wing guy is going to be two players that I played about Leeds. On the left, um, is the Ivory Coast International. Um, played with Bournemouth in the Premier League. Uh, I think he was at Leicester at some point, but not when they not when they won the league. Um, I think earlier than that, before he came to Leeds. But played with Bournemouth in the Premier League. A little little guy, Ivory Coast International. Yeah. I think now, now he's. he's I can't remember who's at now, to be honest. I know I I, I can see you. I know who you're talking about, but I don't I'm not gonna get his name. I know who you're talking about. It's all you, well, Andrew. This is all oh, I'm, I'm I'm out. Uh, great little bit, Max Gradle. <sighs> I was never gonna get his name. I swear, was he in Holland as well? He, he's played played in the, or Germany, huh? 
Holland or Germany, I think he's at. Somewhere no. in Holland or Germany. Yeah, maybe. He's he's moved around quite a bit, but like he's he was like he was like a t- talented boy, um, coming off the left, right footed, could whip a ball in both foot, could could whip a ball into the into the top corner, bottom corner, cutting inside, um, quick, strong, um, like um, would work back, would work for the team. Crazy little character as well, but um, but yeah, he's um, he's a uh, yeah, he's, he was a top top player, and obviously he's like Ivory Coast international as well. Good trainer, bad trainer. No, he was, he was a good trainer. He just loved football. He just want he just wanted to play. He's one of those players, you know, just like they just want to play football. Um, and so put a ball at his feet. Um, he's happy. He was never happy with the shell yeah, runs. Exactly. <laughs> Probably not as much, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, just wants to play. But he was, he was a fit. He was a fit boy. Um, could go up and down, um, and, and just the ability on the ball. Um, if you're if you're an attacker, um, uh, you're a striker, and you want a bit of service, he, he's gonna he's gonna give you that. Yeah. Excellent. No, definitely. I, I remember seeing him for Bournemouth. He was a very very good player. Um, I think he he only spent a season there. I think he wasn't there for long. Um, so moving on to the right hand side. Uh, right hand side Premier League player played for about four teams in the Premier League, I believe. Maybe, maybe, maybe five, four teams in the Premier League. Still, still playing. Scottish international. Um, Scottish international. A Scottish international. Still playing now, Graham Alexander. Yeah. Still He's been playing for still about playing. 60, 600 years, Graham Alexander. <laughs> he didn't play for Leeds. <laughs> No, yeah, so put his left foot in, but he's playing on the right side. Um, oh, unbelievable, um, unbelievable delivery. Was he at West Ham? He was at West Ham, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was at Norwich as well, wasn't he? Yeah, you got uh, it. What's his name? What's his name? Uh, was it West Brom, West Ham? He's at West Brom now. Yep, Robert. Yeah, well, I can't, snot, I don't know. Snot, 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 grass, not grass. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that was oh, the, by the way, that was for the listeners, not you, Marv. Oh, okay, <laughs> it was to help them. No, 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 you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, Robert Snodgrass. Snodgrass. Yeah, he is yes. very, very, and he strikes me as a type of player that I don't understand why he can't settle. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, why do you, do you can you give us some insight into why he can't settle at any particular club? Because um, he seems to yo-yo around a lot, but everywhere he goes, they say he's incredible. But he never mm-hmm. stays. Before you answer that, you I mean, know, I'm, before you answer that, I'm just going to say one thing. I think um, technically, what I've seen of him was unreal, unreal, and I think everyone sees that. The only thing what I think what he might have struggled with was pace. Just, it's, mm-hmm. just it wasn't. It didn't look. It doesn't look like. I mean, he could move. He was move. He could move that quick. Although technically he was unbelievable, in my opinion. Yeah, that, that, that could be one of one of the things. It's like playing on the wing. It's like um, you know, a lot of teams they want they want like that that pacey winger, and maybe they, he just didn't give that to to the teams that what they were looking for at the time. But he he played. I know like at West Ham he played a lot of games. Um, Norwich he obviously played a lot of games for them too. So, but yeah, he was just unbelievable coming off that right. His left foot was like a, a one foot was like it's a one. And he, he would cut inside and he would, he would just slice open the defence when he was at Leeds. You know, Jermaine Beckford scored like a, a bunch of goals. Um, Him and um, people like off. Uh, Luciano Becchio and those type of people mm. would have absolutely loved it yeah. when he when they were at Leeds. Yeah, his, deli- his, his delivery as well, corners, free kicks, um, just whipping that ball. He, he used to put so much whip on that ball um, when, he's, when he's delivering. So it's a nightmare, nightmare for defenders. But yeah, like a great lad as well. Love, love playing with him. Um, like good guy. Um, but yeah, he's um top top player. But like Mark yeah. said, maybe that maybe that thing, just the pace element. Um, yeah. But that surprises um, just me because I mean, I mean, you two both work in football now. Um, that surprises me. You're saying that because surely you know that if you scout him properly, you can see he hasn't got that turn of pace. So when he turns up on, and then you go. Run down on the wing fast, and he doesn't do it. You can't go. 
Why is he not doing that? Well, surely you should know that he's not that type of player. Do you, do you understand what I mean? So no, no, I, 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 I totally get you, and I, and I think that maybe um, is it something personality wise? Do you think? Well, well, I, I, I just, I just know looking at what I know of him. I mean, Enoch would know more because I didn't play with him, but his quality on the ball is just like was unreal. So I wouldn't have him on the wing. I would have him in the central or maybe as a holder now because he, he could just spray balls, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And so, again, I mean, he was probably, as he got older, he might, they might have, people might have moved him or done that with him and put him in them situations. But it just is a little bit of a case where the quality, what he brought going forward, like Enoch you know, said, he's whipping balls in and stuff, you need to have him high up the field. And maybe that was one of the things where they thought they could get the best out of him was on the wings. I also think that you, you look at kind of every team he's gone to, he's, he's kind of stayed and played a lot of games yeah. until it gets to a point where it's like, okay, maybe they're looking for something different. Yeah. So I think he's like, people sign him, but he still, he plays, he still plays a lot of games. He's, he's usually a starter um, in the teams he goes to um, or there or thereabouts. And then like, um, you have to think after maybe a year, a couple of years, maybe managers change. And then it's like, as you know, that's probably um, what it is. He does seem to be very important. You look at his previous clubs, they do turn, tend to have quite a high turnover of managers. So maybe that's what he mm-hmm. is. They just don't fancy him after a while. Yeah. And, and, and that's just like part, part and parcel of football. It's like, yeah. you know, the turnover, yeah. the turnover of managers at certain levels. Especially that, yeah, the lower end Premier League, the top end championship, which is where he seems to be as a player. Yeah. There's incredible turnover. Incredible yeah. turnover. So moving on to centre forward. Or I right, say, I say centre forward, attacking midfielder, number ten, whatever you want to call him. Yeah, just just behind the top guy, um, played with it at Notts County, um, in the England squad right now, um, potentially going to the Euros. Unbelievable, unbelievable player. Um, I played with him when he was eighteen years old, um, and in training, couldn't get the ball off him. Couldn't get the ball off him. Um, I think if I give if I give the team, I think you'll get it straight away. Okay, I'm going to say now. Sacco. No. Um, he'd have been about when he'd have been about four years old. Sacco's only seventeen, isn't he? Is he? <laughs> yeah, he's really young. I mean, you know, he looks only like twenty-three. Yeah, yeah, I look 23. Um, <laughs> no, um, yeah, it's a Florida so he, Sun. In it's a Florida in Sun. 2012, no, 2012. Yeah, 2012, 2013. He came to he came to Notts County on loan. Surely, he, I know he went on loan to Norwich, but surely he couldn't have gone on loan to you as well. A what Millwall. Was? Surely Harry Kane couldn't have gone to you as well. <laughs> Not Harry Kane. I was going to say because he went on loan to Millwall and Norwich. Surely. Um, yeah. The only other player in that squad that's starting up front that could be is Marcus Rashford. He doesn't. He doesn't start up top. He's like I'm playing him he's at ten. He's a ten. He's a ten. Andrew. But he, he can play off the left. He can play off the right. Greenwood. I give you. Huh? No, it's Jack Green. Grealish. Jack Grealish. That's the one. Yeah, Jack, it's Jack, Jack Grealish. Yeah. Grealish. Unbelievable talent. Unbelievable. Yes. You couldn't get the ball off him in training. Yeah, I saw a picture. I saw a picture of him making his debut um, for Villa when he was sixteen, and it was against Man City. And Mancini was the manager. That's how long ago it was. Or maybe it was somebody Mancini. Maybe it was somebody before that even. So it was a long, long, long while ago. So yeah, you're right. And so how old was he when he was at Notts County? Eighteen. And you could see the flamboyance. From then, he was like, um, he come in 18 years old and like him and there's another kid from Celtic called Callum McGregor. Like Callum McGregor's output yes. was probably better than Grealish at the time. He scored like 12 goals that season. But Grealish just has a talent um, in terms of like, like just dribbling, going past players. Like he couldn't get the ball off him, even in training. Like some of the senior pros used to scream at him, just pass the ball. And like talking about being the most fouled player in the Premier League is like... Um, in training, he used to get kicked all the time. You, you know, you know, Marvin, like a young boy comes in on load and he's like dribbling past senior pros. They, they got to they snap him in training. 
He used to just get up and get on with it. Just get up, get on with it, get the ball again, do it again. Like, unbelievable. Strong boy as well, even at 18. Like, you can see his legs, his calf muscles. It's, like, insane, right? Even at that age, like, um, always socks down his, down his, like, leg as well. Even back then, always been the same. He just, he just gets on the ball, dribbles past people, like, like they're not there. Do you think that's made him the player he is today? The fact that he's gone through the loan system, like him and Harry Kane, like I was saying earlier on, as opposed to somebody who's just gone through the academy set up, sat on the bench, done a bit more academy football. And there's nothing right or wrong with either. I'm just wondering, say, compared to a Phil Foden, who all he's ever done is seen Man City, compared to Jack Grealish, who's gone out to a couple of clubs. Do you think that going out to a few clubs helps or do you think it's horses for courses? Um, no, I think um, playing men's football is important at a young age. Um, I think just like knowing like um, that, okay, maybe you're not the best at, at, like you are with the 18s or the 23s, right? Like, going into like League One, even Championship, where you know players are playing for their livelihoods. Um, they're going to be strong. They're going to be physical. They're going to push to try to push you around, and you have to adapt to that. I think it's it's, it's good development for players. Of course, if you're like not everyone can be a Foden. Foden's like an exceptional talent that um, you just think, okay, he's 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 just gonna go. But most players don't have don't don't just go like that. Their their trajectory is not like Foden. So I think for a lot of players, like going into like that kind of level, kind of makes or breaks them. Because I've seen players come from Chelsea and they come and they can't hack it in League One, and then they go back and they drop out of the game because it's like you see it so often because they just like. They get into men's football and it's, it's just not the same as playing 23s at, at a Premier League club. Yeah. No, I, I, agree. I totally agree with what Enoch just said there. I mean, it's, it's for someone like Grealish, it was, you can just see the way he plays. He just, he just loves the game. He just like mm -hmm. he just loves the game. He, he, he has his way how he wants to play. It's a little bit like um, when, I mean, when Gascoigne obviously come onto the scene, I'm not saying obviously he's like, He's like gas going level, but I mean, it, it, some people might say he's up there. But again, he just loved the game and just enjoys dribbling and creating things. And, he, and he's taken that all the way through by the sounds of things up until now as captain as Villa. And he's doing exactly the same things which he, he was doing back then as an 18 year old um, at Knox. Yeah. And and where and his best position according to you, obviously you put him as number ten. But was that a case of fitting in um, Fabian Delph and Bouchard, or do you think that playing centrally behind Harry Kane is the best position for him for England? I think you just you just want to get him on the ball in in the yeah. final third. You don't want to you don't want him to be having to drop back too deep um, and picking up the ball. I think he can do so much damage in a, if you, in in those spaces. Um, between the midfield and attackers, he can do a lot of damage in, in that kind of area. So I think if you could just give him that kind of free roll, allow him, allow him to go and get on the ball, I think he can. He, he, he's a game changer. He is a game changer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. So up front on his own with Jackie Grealish feeding up him top, in. Um, who are you going for? Have you named yourself Enoch Shawomni? No, I haven't named myself. Um, uh, shout outs to shout outs to like um, kind of like Jermaine Beckford of this world um, scored so many goals League One went to Everton scored I think ten in the Premier League um, yeah great Lu Luciana Becchio um, great um, when I first went to Bristol Steve Brooker I learned so much from Steve Howard um, all these guys um, that I played with um, unbelievable players but guy I've gone for I didn't uh, so I played with him in the Nigerian national team and. Um, just what I saw in training and just a couple of games, I was just like, this guy is just insane. Um, like quick, strong, like agile, can move and dribble. So he played in the Prem with, I think I'll give it away. No, so he played in the MLS. <laughs> played in the MLS uh, with Seattle Sounders. Um, like he played for Inter Milan. I think when he made his debut for Nigeria, I think we actually made the debut at the same time. Um, but in, he was at Inter Milan at the time. Got a move to the Premier League. Um, played with Alan Shearer, I believe, with Newcastle. Oh, yeah, I've got it now. I was thinking you played with Kanu, but then I thought, surely Kanu couldn't still be playing when you made your debut. He was still playing, though. 
<laughs> oh, was okay. Because Canu played for Inter. That's what made me think when you said Inter, but then when you threw Shearer in, I was going to... Canu didn't play with Shearer. Yeah, yeah. The man with the biggest no, well, feet in football, I heard. How big are Canu's feet? Are they ridiculous? Yeah. I think they're like size 14, but his drags are unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I can't yeah. I can't think of his name. He will, uh, the man who he's picking is arguably one of the fastest five players I've ever seen, if it is who I think it is. Was he like lightning? He's, rap, he's rapping. He's lightning. I think it is. Or, and then he went to Germany after? I think. Um, he went to the MLS. Oh, um, maybe I've got the sure. wrong player. Mm. Oh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Surely, uh, um, Oberfemi Martins. Yes. Yeah, mm. Obafemi Martins. Um, he is rapid. He is rapid. rapid. Strong, strong as an ox. Like little, but he just like taps so strong. Like you can't, you can't really knock him off the ball. He, he just pushed. He used to push defenders around, and um, I just think his pace with like with Grealish, like just behind him. Yeah. No, he just like I was, obviously I played. I went. I got into Nigeria, but after that first season at Luton, right. So that first season, like obviously the first half of the season, I'm on, I'm playing for forty pound a week, and then by the end of that season, I'm in the Nigerian national team squad, and I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? Like kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then I see guys like um, Martins and like uh, we had like John Utaka that was at they used to be at Portsmouth um, playing in the Premier, like the winger, unbelievable. Had Ogbeche, who was at um, PSG as another striker. Um, Olive and John, like I said, and these guys, I was just looking at them in in, in the training sessions. I was like. Whoa! This is like this is insane to me. Like what they what like the things that they they're doing. And Obafemi Martin is like just like how he impressed me. Um, just in those couple of games against Ireland and Jamaica, and and just like um, and just in training as well. I was just like, and I was just like, I was just like picking his brain, trying to get like as much information as I can from him as a striker and all that kind of stuff. And he was young as well at the time. He was like, he was like twenty one. Um, probably he's probably he was probably younger than me at the time. I think. Um, but yeah, I was just like trying to just like learn from him, look at him, see what he does, see his movement, um, like obviously his power, just like pushing defenders aside. He can get away with a little bit because he's small and it's six foot five. You don't really get away with much like pushing defenders about. But, um, but yeah, he was unbelievable. And what was that like when, when you, you got the call up? Was, was it, I mean, obviously you, I'm guessing you nerves, but again, like you've, it's your first season with Luton, like, you're involved and now you're being like um pushed up now into the international level which is like i mean on another level to be honest so mm-hmm. was that quite nerve-wracking on i mean some players i mean can get caught and being in an, in awe and maybe not enjoy the experience as much because they feel that oh my gosh i mean i've just i wasn't even in the game obviously two years ago but now i'm playing on an international stage yeah, I just felt like um, like going in there. So I didn't, I didn't think I was gonna play. So I didn't even bring like shin pads. I was like, I'll just come to the training camp because it was in London. So I just rolled over to the training camp, and then um, I didn't think they were gonna put me on the bench or anything. I like, just introduce yourself to the to the squad and to the to the to the coach and stuff like that. So I'm like, I turn up and they're like, Oh, you're on the bench against Ireland, and I'm like, <coughs> Excuse me, <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm what? <laughs> And then get the phone to your parents. Go. This is this is legit. I'm actually. You I'm might like, yeah, get this, down is ha- this is happening. This is happening right now. You need to get yourself <laughs> down here right now. And yeah. Then, like um, and obviously it was just like yeah. So in, in the training sessions it was it was like unbelievable. And at the time, me being naive, just coming into the into the game, I didn't even know you get paid for international football. So what? I didn't know you got paid. So I was like all naive, like proper like. Uh, and then like the first meeting was about the money. And then it's like, they just paid me in like, in cash. And I was like, like, what's happening right now? What's happening to my life right now? And like, um, and, and yeah, so it was, just, it was just insane to be there and just to train with those guys and see them like firsthand. So Kanu and Okocha was um, still part of the Nigerian squad at that time, but they didn't play in the game. They just like kind of went, they just kind of went and then flew to Nigeria for the World Cup qualifiers. And then I was like, then at the end I was like, oh shit, am I, am I, am I going to be called up for the World Cup qualifiers? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, um, I was just like, yeah, just it was like, a, it's like it's just so surreal at the at the time. Fantastic. And did you get called up again, or was it just those games um, um, that were in was, around it was, London? It was, those, it was just those that time. Yeah, like Nigerian, the talent in in like Nigeria is just insane. 
like mm-hmm. throughout, like especially that time, it was like so many good players, and now now the the players are coming back again in Nigerian. Um, you get like a couple, a few in the Premier League, uh, obviously like the Leicester's and stuff like that. So there's, there's yeah. the players are coming back again. I think it's just and like every talent. nation, every national team, it's just cycles. It like yeah. every mm-hmm. national team yeah. in the world's the same. Um, yeah, but but from Germany. It seems to have just been non-stop in Brazil. It seems to be non-stop. <laughs> Even Brazil, I suppose. Yeah. But, um, so you've named your best eleven. Final question for you from myself before Marv asks these few. Who is the best manager you have ever worked under? And you don't need to do clues or guesses. You can just um, yeah. give some honourable mentions and then name whoever it is. Um, um, I'll give I'll give up to Mike New because he gave me my chance. But I think um, as I got older, there's kind of like. Um, a way obviously as a player as a as a personality is like how you like to work and i think the one manager that kind of kind of got me in that way was um actually stephen presley when he was at full Kirk. and i only worked with him for a couple of months but i just felt like um just the way he approached it um how positive and like i came to full Kirk when they only won two games in the season i came in january and they had only won two games the whole season um, but the way he approached just the games, the positivity, even like even in training, um, how he took every good thing you did from the game and showed you the good things you did instead of just kind of dwelling on the negative stuff. Um, said, OK, this is where you need to improve that, but showing you like how good of a player you are. And I think he actually just being there at a the time gave me the catalyst to go to Tranmere and become top goal scorer. And obviously I won player of the season there when I was there. So because um, I had a year of kind of only playing one game because I had the injury at Leeds and then I didn't play and then I left to go to Falkirk. And they 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 played me and then just his positivity and the way he worked kind of, kind of like suited my personality and allowed me just to like go back to enjoying the game again. Excellent. Okay, so and yes, our, um, more or less our final question is that... Um, what, what are you doing now? Just to, so that the 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 Tranmere's and the Lutons and the Bristol Cities and stuff can just we touched on a little bit about it at the beginning, but just give us a little bit insight of um, what you're up to now. Yeah, so I've um, I created a we actually with Leeds United um, and Leeds Beckett University, we created a program called the Carnegie International Soccer Academy. So like um, like Marv, I've been in the US like like five six years now. And obviously with the US and just college, the university programs in terms of like how good they are in terms of getting a degree plus getting elite training, we kind of brought that over back to the UK. So now with Leeds and Leeds Beckett University, we created the Carnegie International Soccer Academy. So I'm head of recruitment for that um, in terms of um, bringing kind of US-based female and male players to come over, get high level training. They can play over nine months, showcase games against pro academies, um, all that kind of, all that um, element. So I, I'm I'm involved in that. Um, also, kind of um, yeah, like I said, as a resource for for players that kind of want to navigate this this uh, this crazy soccer industry. Um, I look into take their games to the next level. Um, and I've got tech that they can use. I've got like um, all this kind of stuff to help just help improve their own game. Um, so I'm really involved in just helping players um, get like elite training education and, and go to that next level of what they're trying to achieve. Excellent. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, it was lovely to hear from you. Thank you so much for getting up so early, Enoch, um, all and the way me. over in Florida. And thanks, Marv. Um, <laughs> um, it was awesome to hear from you. And it was fantastic to, um, to hear your best 11. Um, and we also just want to say for myself, and Marv, thank you to our listeners um, who've been on this journey for season one. And we'll be yep. back after the Euros yes, with sir. a lot of hot, awesome new things going on. We've got some good link ups with some new companies, um, which is very exciting. And also, we've got some big names, some really big names coming up as well, um, courtesy of Mr. Marvin Johnson. So, Marvin. Come on, England. Come on, England. <laughs> that's from Marvin Johnson and come on England you can do it again and Enoch thank you so much sir yes 
Enoch, thank you. Thanks, for, being, thanks for having me. Yes. It's been, it's You're been, welcome. It's been great to it's been great to reminisce about the players I played with. It's it's, um, it's great. It's it's actually hard to pick an eleven. It's so hard. It is. I agree. Awesome. No, listen, I got. Go I was gonna say no. I was gonna say stay, stay, stay in touch. I mean, if I'm down your neck of the woods, I'll give you a shout anyway. All right. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Fabulous. Well, that was um, Enoch Shawamli's my best eleven. Thank you so much, Enoch.